to call the Finance and Administration Committee of December 13th to order, please. Uh, would the Manatech please call, call the roll? Alderman Woods? Here. Alderman Zara? Here. Alderman Winger? Alderman Eugene Wesley? Here. Alderman Szymarski? Alderman Shockey? Here. Alderman Coles? Here. Alderman, Alderman Roy Wesley? Here. First item is an approval of the minutes of November 29th of 2012. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Questions? Nope. Would the minute taker please show Alderman Winger just came in. Next item is a report and recommendation on the DuPage Water Commission rate increase. Mr. Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, start by saying that, um, as you're all aware, there was a revised memo that went out in Tuesday's packet. Um, historically, the DuPage Water Commission has only given us an increase one year at a time. Uh, last year, they actually set forth four years at one time, um, but because we had some rate uncertainty, we passed just the one year. Um, and going forward, the council historically has said that we have to pass the DuPage water increases. So since they were known, we put them all out there on Friday. Um, over the weekend, there was a number of questions and concerns about confusion, about our rate increases on top of those and doing three this year and one next year and one the following year. Uh, so after some deliberation and conversation, um, we went back to the approach of just going one year at a time on it. Uh, we still left the three, the next two increases on there for reference, but tonight we're only looking to approve the rate increase for January 1 of 2013. And again, that was set forth uh, last year and the next two years were also in that same package um, from the City of Chicago and the DuPage Water Commission. So we need a motion now to do the January 2013 increase? Correct. And then just before that, just to be clear, uh, to remind everyone again, the City of Wooddale does not have a rate increase coming in calendar 2013. So the, the 59 cents is the only rate increase from the DuPage Water Commission. That's all that's going on in the books additionally I'll make this that year. In the form of a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Questions? Comments? Alderman Wesley. I have, I have one question. Are, are we going to say tonight on how much of an increase that's going to be? And the other thing is, if I understand that, 59 cents for 2013. But are we going to notify the people 2014, 2015 that they also going to get increased that, that the uh, county is going to raise it for they have some hankling out there that they are going to have another increase for they could, for they know up front? Or are we going to do this every year? Are we going to come back and say, okay, we know it's going to go on because Lake Michigan water went up. I understand that. But I would think that we would do something to let the people know that the Page County is going to raise it again, for they know. Mr. Wilson. Uh, correct, and that was part of the reason why last Friday we put all three of them in the memo, was since they were a known quantity at this point, just to, to advise everyone of what was coming. Um, you know, we can, to notify the people, we've done in the past when the rates have gone up, we've put like a one-page flyer in there saying, you know, DuPage Water Commission's increased your rates again, here's what it's going to be. So we can do that um, if the desire is there and then, you know, give them a heads up on those, the next two. Um, those, those next two years, though, there's the possibility of a city increase on top of those um, for the debt service for the treatment plant. But we can certainly, you know, put something on the top of the water bill or in the water bill just to give them a heads up that it's coming down the pipe. Well, uh, what way. I'm just trying to say is, I want it perfectly clear to our citizens that this 59 cents is not our increase, that we as a city elected official are not increasing it, the Page County is. And exactly. There's gotta be a flyer. So. There's gotta be a flyer in the, in, the, in the water bill saying that we did not increase it because I know what's gonna happen. They're gonna see this increase and your office is going to light up with a Christmas tree 
and, and our elected official here, the phones are going to ring off the wall. So I just want to make sure that these people know that this is not Wooddale City Council is not making increase on the city part. It's Page County Water Commission. All I'm saying. I just want to make sure it's not I think we're clear. all agreed on that. It's not ours. And it should be on the next water bill. Explaining it. Yes, sir. I was gonna say certainly. Um, you know, we can utilize the message center at the top of the bill right. and, and put that in there. That uh, that doesn't cost us anything to put it on there. So we can certainly put it on top of there for you. Exactly. Anybody else? Okay, all in favor, or do we need a voice? I don't need a... Was there any other questions? Did I, did, did, there weren't any more questions, were there? Well, I thought Art had his hand up. All in favor works. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No opposition, motion carries. Next item, uh, report and recommendation on property casualty discussion. <coughs> Again, Mr. Wilson. Mr. Chairman, um, this one is, is kind of a, uh, well, I guess I hate to classify it as a no-lose proposition. Um, we've, we're currently with IRMA for our property casualty and workers' comp. Uh, we've been with them for over 21 years. Uh, and lately, it's been not the way we think it should be. Um, there's been some things perhaps missed. Um, some things are being becoming delayed. Um, and their growth strategy has been more into the special entities like fire districts, libraries, some of the smaller districts. Um, and in my memo, I said it's kind of the tail wagging the dog. Um, in two meetings in a row, we talked about uh, watercraft for fire departments. You know, a half an hour at a board meeting about boats. So it, it, it's become a little far afield the way that they, they've grown. Um, and in order for an entity to leave Irma, we need to give them a one-year notice that we're intending to leave. Um, but giving them that notice doesn't mean that we have to leave. So that's why I say it's kind of a no-lose situation, where if we want to leave, we have to let them know, but that doesn't mean we have to leave. Right. Um, in doing so, to make sure that it made sense to even give them the notice, We've been working with a couple different brokers to go out in the marketplace and see what sort of rates are out there. Um, the bottom part of my memo, you'll see that um, the rates we've gotten preliminarily, obviously they're not binding at this point because we're not going to sign anything at this time, um, <coughs> were anywhere from 48000 to what 64000 less than what we're currently paying with Irma. Uh, so with that in mind, staff thought it would be a good idea to you know, let Irma know that we're thinking about leaving. We've also heard that some places after they tell Irma that magically uh, have a better underwriting experience and save some money just by sending them that letter. So um, at this point, like I said, it's kind of no harm, no foul. Um, worst case, we save money. Um, but we do need to pass a resolution from the city council uh, to send to Irma to effect that notice to them to possibly leave. So I'll make a motion that we inform Irma that uh, in writing that we are giving them a one year notice, which does not mean we're going to actually do it at this point, but a year from now we'd be able to if we want to. That's anybody even make a second? I'll second. Uh, questions? Mr. Wesley. And I'm sorry that we, I'm, I going to ask this question. We give them a notice the companies that you are looking for in in the change you know the, the company are they offering us almost the same exact coverage because irma has been good with us in, in our claims most part are they offering the same package deals the same coverage of what we have now or is it going to be lesser coverage or i, I just i mean i'm in favor of giving them putting them a notice see if they sharpen the pencil but are you going to make the determination or is the council going to make the determination what company we're going to use? I think the council will be doing that in a year from now, but Mr. Wilson, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, sure, ultimately it, it would be your decision um, which direction we go. Um, we had a meeting on Tuesday 
uh, so two days ago, with one of the brokers and some of the preliminary coverage levels that the other companies have quoted. Um, in some cases, they're similar or exactly the same to Irma. Um, in a lot of cases, Irma's uh, limit on paper would look higher, but it's a shared limit throughout the entire pool. Okay. Um, like for the, the umbrella coverage is higher, but it's shared for all the entities. So, you know, once you, if you just kind of straight line it, some of the coverages actually appear to be better. Uh, but that's part of the process over the next year to vet those out. Okay. Um, that's also part of the reason that Irma once a year is because they want the quote that we get so they can go through and point things out as well and kind of leverage them back and forth a little bit. So, we got to have that? Oh, anybody else? Alderman? Brad, the, um, the other vendors, um, do we have to give them your notice also or is just Irma the only one that requires that? Are you speaking of uh, who would be one of the one of the new prospective vendors? Right. You said you had four vendors. Mm -hmm. Those four vendors um, are they required to get a four uh, a year notice also when we uh, oh, are sure. looking to cancel? Yeah, my understanding is no. Um, the Irma situation because it's a pool. Uh, you may remember um, a few months ago there was the anti-pooling legislation that was kind of, that was floating mm -hmm. around. Um, and one of the things that was trying to get passed was like a 30 day out from the pools instead of a year. Um, so, but now since it would be, uh, well, there's one pool that we're looking at, but some of it would be standalone vendors. Um, they're just, they would just be a year to year, renew year to year, would be free to go. Uh, they'd say come and go as we please, but yeah, there wouldn't be that requirement. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Okay, we'll have the vote all in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item, report on attendance, remote attendance at meetings. Um, we do have a quandary here, and I don't know legally what we can do, so I'll ask the manager, Mr. Mermis. Well, basically, we're here tonight just to kind of... Uh, poll the council on if they really want to get serious about some uh, remote participation. It is possible to have remote participation. Uh, we do have um, limited technology in place and to get more serious technology, it would cost some, some dollars, not serious dollars. Um, but we don't want to go down the road of getting more serious about remote participation and getting more in depth with it if we're um, opposed to that philosophy. So we're looking for some direction on whether or not we want to consider remote participation. I know that the, the attorney isn't here tonight, but would there be any liability if uh, somebody is driving a car or a truck uh, and remote attendance and has an accident? Yeah, that I can't answer. Would the city be liable in any way? I don't have an answer for you for that. As the staff hasn't found anything out further about it. Not that specific question. Anything else you can tell us? That it is allowed and we can get more detail than, on how we want to structure our own prog program if you guys are interested in exploring that. Suggestions, Alderman uh, Woods. Yeah. Uh, could, they, could they vote by proxy, just like at a board meeting if, if they knew the questions? Mr. Manager. That I do know the answer for. The city attorney told me no. So does that mean no? <laughs> His legal opinion <laughs> says no. <laughs> what don't you understand about NO, huh? Alderman Coles. Well, I was sick for almost six months and I tried to make a telephone, hook up telephone here for the meetings and Mayor Johnson said no. So I couldn't do it when I was away for six months. And I was sorry I was away, but there ain't nothing I can do about it. We did have one instance yes. with an alderman being out of town and there was an important vote and we did have a tele teleconference set up, yeah. but that was just for one meeting. Yeah. Alderman Zaria. Um, do you know if there's any other towns or cities that do this? We did not do an official survey. 
um, off the top of my head. I do not know. Um, we could do a survey. So the, again, the, without an official survey, um, our insurance pool, IPBC, uh, they do allow remote participation, um, but they have a conference call phone number, and then they also have a web login where you can actually see the packet going along. So um, it's more geared towards, and those meetings are during the day, so that's more geared towards you're sitting at your desk, you can't make it. I'm sorry, can you speak up a little? Oh, sure. Um, yeah, the IPBC one, uh, the meetings are during the day, so it's, there's a, a conference call number and then also kind of a webinar to follow along the packet. So that's more geared towards a sit at your desk call-in sort of thing. Um, but those rules were vetted through the Open Meeting Act by um, IPBC's attorney, like ours would have to be. Um, as for communities, I don't know, but I do know that uh, our insurance pool does. Uh, Mr. Alderman Lazario. You know, I'd like to see this explored a little bit more. Um, I think there's still a lot of um, questions that need to be answered. Um, so I, I would recommend going forward with this. Um, if I may, the, from what I understand, it, it's, a, it's a temporary problem or a, a, it's a trial period problem and it may resolve itself after I don't know how what the length of time is, but it might be better off just putting this off until after the first of the year and finding out uh, if we can get more information as how long this is going to go on. Um, Alderman Winger, go ahead. Well, it, I wasn't aware that this might be temporary when I just rose my hand to be recognized, but um, should this be a more permanent situation uh, then I'd like us to pursue figuring out how we would do this. As long as the member that's not attending physically has a vote at the committee, council, and exec session. So if it's purely to attend and weigh in but no vote, then I'm not so crazy about uh, pursuing this. But it, So I would say let's look into it further. Thank you. Yeah, I would, I would have, ask staff to follow up on it and with the attorney. You know, see if there is any liability. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Going back to Alderman Winger's concern, you'd be able to vote. I mean, that's not that's okay. not a question. So. I'm sorry. What? You you would be able to have a vote with the remote participation, so that's not an issue. He would be able to have a vote. Yeah. On yes. Anything that's going on. Correct. But legally, what if something happened to him while he's? Again, that I don't know. That's, that's what I'm saying. What would our liability be? Alderman Coles. Make a suggestion that we let it go until after the first of the year and see what happens. You only, got, you only have two more meetings. and Actually, one more. One, well, one, well, one more meeting. And after that, uh, there'll be a first of the year, and we'll see what happens at first of the year. I thought he said this was a temporary, uh, they put him on temporary shift. Uh, I understand. I don't think we should knock him, knock him out or anything like that. No. That's, that's, we didn't elect him, people elected him, so. Yeah, it is, I understand it is a trial period, yeah. so. It so may, we do it that okay, way. Alderman Eugene, uh, Roy Wesley, please. Well. I don't think we should be talking about one individual if we're going to do this is for the is for is changing the policy too that any of us could do it or any county board or and city council member could do it so my question is okay they're here remote we have our minute taker here or someone wants to answer ask a question I don't think the iPad raises his hand and say, I want to ask a question. <laughs> I, I mean, there's, I don't know how far technology's come with this stuff, and I don't know how you would even get the question out there. At, True. I mean, 
And what happens if the server goes down when we're in the middle of a meeting? I mean, now, now his attendance is no longer. So now, instead of seven aldermen, now you're down to six aldermen or whoever's absent. And you won't even know it. Once more, it may be just temporary. So I'll make a motion that we table but until. I understand what you're tabling, but just remember what we're doing here is just not just for, it's for everyone. So we're yeah. changing a policy. So I'm, the motion is to table until after the first of the year and we have more information from both the council and the, uh, and the municipal lawyer. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor of tabling? Mr. Woodsy. There's no questions during the motion to table. You want to have a voice vote on, would vote on that? Please call the roll. Alderman Woods? No. Alderman Lazara? No. Alderman Winger? No. Alderman Eugene Wesley? No. Alderman Shockey? <laughs> well, I think that's, I'll say no as well. It's the majority. Alderman Coles? I'll go with the majority. Alderman Murray Wesley? Abstain. So what do, we, does <laughs> somebody have, <laughs> do no. 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 does somebody have an idea of what we should be doing? Alderman Eugene Wesley? I, I think, I know where you, where you were going with this. The only thing that I would ask is, in the meantime, if we decide to hold this off until after the first year, I would ask that you give staff direction to look at what it would cost to do this project. Okay, it, it may not even be worth the cost for the city to do that. Okay? I would think that. So I mean, I really don't want to kill this whole thing. I'd like to have them do the research get the cost because then right after if we table it till the first year or after then let's let's do it but again it it's not addressing this one individual it's addressing this whole thing unfortunate that we didn't ha have this discussion when mr coles was out which we couldn't get that resolved but here's the opportunity that if someone is actually sick for a long period of time and again he should have the option to somehow do something so I would ask that if a motion comes back on the floor is that we have staff to put together what the cost is do a survey on the surrounding towns but if they do it give us some more info before we just table this and Alderman Winger and then the manager thank you uh, so the way I understand it we wouldn't be able to implement this right after the first of the year anyways. There's a lot that we have to get ironed out, attorneys, um, architected how it'll work, and what if there's two people out? Because now that one person can be out, there, there may be times where there's two to three people dialing in remotely. We'll have to figure out the logistics on that. Um, so I believe this will take a couple months to get everything in process, should, should it be viable for us. And secondly, the cost. I'm not going to be... Um, well, the cost is always factored into it, that I believe that for someone who's elected to represent the people, and if they go through the effort, no matter where they are, to dial in to be a part of the process, cost is going to be um, subjective with that, that um, that's a very important function of our government. So uh, while it may be a factor, it's not gonna control whether or not we implement this. Thank you. Plus, oh, Mr. Manager, please. I can speak to the cost right now. As as far as cost, it's going to be <clears throat> it's going to be minimal. I mean, it's it's audio technology. We can do it now. It's just you know a couple hundred dollars, maybe purchase an additional phone. So it's not going to be a, a cost barrier. Like I stated before, it's more of personal preference of the council. Do you want to allow remote participation? And then we could tailor it how you want to allow it. For instance. I don't think that the remote participation actually counts towards a quorum, um, but you can still vote. So there's some ins and outs to it, um, but it, the cost is not going to be an issue. Alderman Woods. Yeah, <clears throat> I think I agree with uh, uh, what everybody else has set up here. Just let's move forward and, and answer all those questions. There are many legal questions. How many people can be out? Are those people counted as a quorum? Uh, 
let's let's get them answered uh, once and for all, and then we can make a decision for not only for the person we're talking about, but for anybody else that would go sick or uh, vacation or, or anything else. Thanks. <coughs> and you have to remember that five members of the city council must physically attend each meeting. Otherwise, you don't have a meeting, Mr. Mayor. And the other thing is, along the lines of what you said, what if that uh, that person is working? What if their boss doesn't want them to be on the phone while they're driving? I mean, that's a might. Be that's a another point, right? So there's a number of things we have to check into first. So, with those ideas in mind, do we want to table it until next year, when we have all the information we need? I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Can we have a vote on it again? He's got a question before we. I don't think you can have a question when you have a motion at the table. Otherwise, we're gonna, it's going to vote, be voted down again. So. <laughs> all right. Go ahead, Mr. Uh, Alderman Woods. <laughs> and we'll have the question called. I was just confused. You, you, you want to table it until we get more information. All we're asking for is more information. Can't we just yeah. give direction to get the information? Nobody's looking to make a decision. Right. No, we're not making a decision no, tonight. No, exactly. I, I'm in agreement. Just get, let's just get the information. But if we table it, then we're not asking for the information. Well, we're tabling it with with the motion, including to be come back to us in January with the information. It'll be brought up again in January. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, uh, Mr. Manager, pardon me. Um, there's, uh, you could table it, you could not table it. I mean, staff's got the direction to, to get more information. We'll bring it back uh, when we can fit it on the committee agenda, which will likely be in January. In January. Likely, no guarantees. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That's the motion. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That was an easy one. Motion carries. Items to be considered at future meetings. Uh, the CIP in January, lockbox contract in January, strategic plan in January, budget for 2014 in February, and the residential franchise agreement in February of next year. Is anything else to add? Anybody else have anything to add to that? If not, I make a motion to adjourn Finance and Administration Move. Committee. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Mr. Marmus, would you like to do public health next? Sure. Okay. Then I'm going to call to order the public health. Um, what am I doing? Do I don't know yeah, why I'm doing that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I like to do that before I apologize. <laughs> no wonder I screw up. <laughs> All right. <coughs> Call to order the Public Health, Safety, and Judicial Committee. All right. I'm, I make a motion for the, uh, for the minutes of the meeting of November 20, 29, 2012. Do I have a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, any questions? Okay, no questions. Thank you. Uh, second, uh, rec uh, uh, report and recommendation of the agreement for collections collected for uh, uh, for tickets and fines that have been done. We had one offer called T Track X. Was that Track X first? Uh, Northwest Collectors. Yeah, and now now we're, we're switching over to a municipal collecting agency. So we're going to let the chief take over. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, what we're looking for tonight is approval to sign an agreement with uh, Municipal Collection Services Incorporated. Uh, since, especially since our uh, bringing the tracks guard railroad violations to an in-house process, uh, any enforcement of any fines of that civil finding of liable 
uh, falls onto the city as opposed to the uh, the court if they were to appear in court under normal circumstances under a tra under a traffic ticket. Uh, with that being said, uh, the program has been successful with uh, collecting. Uh, from about 70 to 75 percent of the violators uh, that are found liable after the ability to contest their citation through an administrative hearing. Uh, but even though that part has been successful, uh, if we look over the first six months of the, the new system, uh, and that's about the amount that you have to look at to know that they've had every opportunity to pay and they've, there's been a final determination. Uh, we had about $50,000 in outstanding fines that are, that are out there. Um, going into this new in-house adjudication, uh, we were aware that we were going to have to address these collection issues, uh, and we decided to leave it several months before we did that to see how the program was going and what the success rate was. Uh, so there's a vendor out there that does a number of municipalities' collections around here. Uh, it's called uh, Mid uh, Municipal Collection Services. Uh, we've met with them. Uh, we like their process. We like... Uh, uh, the company and how they how they handle these collections uh, and we've also negotiated with them a, a split where any fines that they collect ones that we would already have to send to collections they would receive 33 percent of the fines the city will receive 67 percent of all fines uh, which is a much better rate than we're getting right now uh, so the goal with that would be is to obviously the in-house tracks guard we would send those to them uh, but also from this point forward I would like to start sending all of uh, past due parking tickets that normally right now would go to this other Northwest Collections and do it all through one company. Um, there was the opportunity to go with uh, the company that handles our railroad enforcement. They do have a collection arm, but handing over also our parking tickets and any other local citations, they don't really handle those. So we're looking for a one-stop shop. Uh, so that would get that going, and if there was ever any desire to add any other type of collection services, we'd be all set up with this company. So uh, that's what we're looking for is agreement to, uh, or approval to sign an agreement with uh, Municipal Collection Services. Anybody have any questions? Sh uh, Alderman Shockey? Is there not uh, something in effect right now that municipalities can let the state know and the state would not give them a license renewal or a plate renewal? Uh, there is a program right now uh, that specifically deals, the plate renewals, that's more for an emissions testing type thing uh, in your vehicles. The, the enforcement wing that the Illinois Department of Revenue has in effect is for basically garnishing tax refunds. Um, and uh, what that would in, entail is they, this company does offer that service. Uh, they would, after exhausting all other collection efforts, they then have to file a certain amount of paperwork with the state, the treasurer's office. And if that's accepted, uh, they would garnish a tax refund before it would come to them. They have a right to, to appeal and do all that. Uh, that's not currently written in the contract uh, because I, I I was under the impression that that was approached a while ago for other types of debts and the city chose not to go that route. It could be added, um, but that's, it, it, and if it was added, the split would be 17% to the collection company and 83% to the city. Um, so that's out there, but that's not part of this current contract. If that was the direction that you gave us, we could get it added to the contract, but we didn't pursue that at this time. Personally, I'd like to see that, but up to the council. Anybody else? Uh, Lazaro, Greg, how long do we usually hold um, a ticket for before we'll send it over to a collection agency? Your typical parking ticket, uh, once it's issued, they get 15 days to pay it, at which time uh, the fine doubles. Uh, so basically if they pay it early, they, you know, the fine stays lower. Uh, after that point, we send them a notice in the mail. Uh, Prior to that even happening, once they receive the ticket, they're allowed to come into the station and fill out a protest form. Uh, so let's say uh, someone for, uh, forgets to hang their handicap placard in their in their car, or uh, uh, you know they have some reason that they forgot to call in a car overnight that was parking overnight because there wasn't. There's a number of situations that they're allowed to protest that. 
uh, and that goes through the watch commander and then to me to f eventually make a decision on the parking ticket. So they've had all those opportunities. Uh, they're sent a notice then, and then they can request a court date to challenge it in the cir in uh, Addison Field Court. Uh, if they choose to challenge it, then a judge would obviously make a determination. Most people uh, that don't pay the fines, they just simply ignore it. And uh, probably, it's usually about three to four months before it's ever uh, sent to collections. Um, that's about the typical. We don't, we don't send them to collections right on the due date or right on, we, we try still give it some time, but some people just don't end up paying. All right, go ahead. When that uh, finally gets to the collection agency, because you said that it increases um, by monthly, is that it? And, and what would that finally be once it gets to them? Uh, it doesn't increase for going to collections. So let's say a uh, uh, not having uh, or parking in a fire lane. If it was a $20 ticket, it doubles to $40 after 15 days if they don't pay it. Uh, handicap violations, those start at 250 and if they don't pay them, it goes to $350. Um, so the decision to send it to collections at some point that does not increase the fine anymore. It basically just becomes a final determination that that debt is owed to the city. And then the collection agency has a responsibility to send out a notice to the person to make it a valid debt and then pursue collection through those means. But it never increases once they get it done? No. Okay, thank you. Anybody else got any questions? Mr. Wood? Like if you didn't show up to court, you there's a warrant issued, right? Correct. So if you didn't pay the ticket, isn't that kind of the same thing? Don't you go through a similar process? Well, there, with with parking tickets and with the uh, tra new tracks guard, the, the ones that we're handling in-house, there's never that personal interaction between the officer and the, uh, and the violator. So if they choose not to go to court, we would have to subpoena them into court. If we're able to deliver the subpoena to them, then if they don't appear in court, a warrant could be issued. Um, but with dealing with the tracks guard, the railroad crossings in-house now, it's just not feasible for us to uh, drive all throughout the suburbs to, to try and chase them down. We give a proper notice, um, and then we would have, because it's written under not a moving violation, but a civil liability under Illinois code and the city code, uh, summonsing them into court just is, isn't practical. Um, so we can't just issue a warrant if they don't pay the, uh, you know, if they don't appear before the local uh, administrative hearing judge. And these tickets are just specifically for tracks guard, I mean, mainly? That's correct. We, uh, <coughs> any other traffic citations for moving violations are written either under city code or Illinois compiled statutes. And then those people, they're delivered a citation right then. They have to appear in court or a warrant can be issued for them. And in prior years, how much have we lost? Uh, I don't have the complete number on parking tickets. I, I suspect it's substantial. Um, I, I looked for the last year, uh, and we collect about $250 a month through collections. Um, I would say we probably have a success rate of 10 to 15%. And uh, I'm hopeful with uh, this company, with, with their technology and how they do it, maybe we'll get to 20, 25%. But uh, getting much beyond that is going to be difficult anyways, just national trends for those types of debts. Thank you. Anybody else got any questions? Eugene? So at one time we did have a collection agency? We currently do have a collection agency for outstanding parking tickets and local ordinance tickets. Uh, let's say someone's issued a fighting ticket or something. Okay. That's out there right now. This isn't anything new. Uh, we could send the tracks guard ones to them right now. We're just not happy with their performance, and we're getting a much better rate with this other company. So it, it, they could be done anyways. It's just we're looking to change companies now. Anybody else? All right, I make a motion that we use municipal uh, collecting agency to collect our parking fines and our other tickets that are not paid, right? Correct. Do I hear a second? Second. 
All in favor? No opposed. Mayor. Chief, real quick, you said right now we collect ourselves about 10 to 15 percent. So on 50,000, we'll get about 7,500. I'm hopeful that we might get ourselves. Correct. If we get uh, if we get about 20 percent of those, so ten thousand dollars, we'll get about 6,700 of that uh, in a year. If if they're able to succeed at a 20 percent rate. Well, that would be less than we're getting right now. Then if we're getting no 10 uh, to 15 percent. They're it's, getting pro they're probably collecting from 10 to 15 percent of them. So let's say if it was even, I'll give them 15 percent. Who's wait? Us collecting right now or them collecting? Because if we co if we're collecting fifteen percent of seventy five hundred dollars on fifty grand. This is just for the uncollected debts. Right. Uh, Let's say we have fifty thousand uncollected and right now we're getting about fifteen percent, that's seventy five hundred. We're splitting that fifteen percent then. Because the the oh, collection we, company I they're they're probably at the most collecting from about 15% of the outstanding parking parking tickets. And then once that 15% is collected, we get half a split with them. Um, they get 50% and they send us a check for the other 50%. Oh, because I was gonna say, if we go with the other guy and we're only, we're making less. Why do we wanna go? Like no, this will be more advantageous for the okay. city and it's gonna be a similar process. All right. Okay. All right, the motion's been set. It's been second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Opposed. One opposed. All right. A report and recommendation on light uh, replacement grant. This is a grant to replace the lights in City Hall, the fluorescent lights, because the fluorescent lights are going to these fluorescent lights are going to be outdated and we're not going to be able to get this particular uh, fluorescent light bulb anymore. And that's the reason why we he got this grant f to replace these. Oh, we got this grant to replace these. Uh, Chief, you can take over. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah, this basically comes down to the lighting that is present in City Hall and uh, the public works building at 720 North and the other uh, wastewater buildings, excluding anything that's gonna be uh, rebuilt through the uh, wastewater treatment plant remodel. So this does not include those. Uh, we made sure that they include, pulled those out. But basically through uh, Clean Air Counts Committee, uh, we've been looking for ways to save money and reduce carbon emissions. Uh, one of those opportunities is, uh, is out there for us right now. Uh, there's about 90, and actually let me get you, uh, there's actually an estimate of $91,416,000 in lighting upgrades that need to be done, um, not immediately, but they're going to have to be done in the next several years throughout City Hall and these other buildings. The current lights that you see here are T12, the larger fluorescent bulbs. Uh, the U.S. Department of Energy and through Congress, a law that was passed many years ago, uh, manufacturers are no longer allowed to make these types of bulbs and ballasts. Uh, you're already seeing the prices dramatically increase and eventually they're going to be unable to be, be purchased in the very near future. What we're going to have to replace them with is eventually T8 bulbs, which are much smaller, or LED bulbs. Uh, so we had a company that, uh, that's doing some, uh, some of these energy audits out there. They came out and they did a tour of our, all of our facilities. Uh, they identified the lights that would have to be switched out, and they assisted us with preparing some grant paperwork uh, to pay for these these lighting. Uh, so out of $91,416 in work to be done, uh, the city, if they, if they choose to accept it, and we haven't committed to anything yet, uh, we've been guaranteed $41,431.25 in an Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity grant and $28,180 uh, through the Illinois Clean Air uh, Energy Foundation. Uh, what that leaves is a maximum of $21,805 that the city would have to play, pay to upgrade all these lighting fixtures throughout the city. Uh, next Thursday, the 20th, 
uh, as part of this process and, and the, the stuff that the company has provided to us, they're going to ob obtain a price, a price from several people who would want to do this project, and they're going to come back to us and give us the price. They're telling us it's going to be 21805 or less. They have many agencies that have done this that have paid zero or maybe up to 10%, so maybe in the $10,000 range. Uh, so uh, along with this, you know, something that we're going to have to replace, you know, if this one goes bad tomorrow, they're going to have to put a new kind of ballast in. All of them will go bad eventually. Uh, what the energy company is saying is we're going to save 112,720 kilowatt hours and reduce uh, uh, over 253,000 pounds of CO2 that won't be released into the atmosphere. And uh, the, the financial return, if the city does have to pay the approximate $21,000, would be just under four years uh, for the energy savings to be reached uh, just in the buildings outside of City Hall. Uh, so we think it makes financial sense to go forward with it. The money is there. The money won't always be there. And uh, uh, we're looking to go forward. And uh, as long as it comes in at that $21,805 or less, uh, we'd like to get approval uh, to proceed with this project. And uh, we could always come back for final approval with the final number. But uh, there's some tight timelines that if uh, this is approved, by the end of December, we have to send, we have to sign the paperwork with the one grant to say we're going to go forward with it. All right. I would like to, I would like to make a motion that we uh, go through with this and get, get the company to uh, see if they'll sign up for us and see what, ha see if we, throughout the whole, all the buildings and in the city except for the uh, sewer plant that we're working on. Do I have a motion? Uh, I mean a second? Second. second. Uh, okay, Mr. Woods, any question? Just one. I know the <clears throat> that there's a lot of different programs out there. Just The fire department did this probably nine months ago and paid next to nothing, so if you just keep an eye out and try to keep it as close to zero. That's what we're hoping for. That's what so. we're hoping for. All right. Thank you. That was it. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Eugene? I, I just have a couple questions. You said a timeline is coming here that we would have to sign. My question, let's take the worst scenario out of this and say we don't get the money or whatever it may be. What this is not in the CIP, so someone is going to answer me where $21,000 is going to come from, or where is it coming, what account it's coming out of. Uh, I did in the CIP. I, I did have some discussions with Mr. Finance Director. Do you mind just handling? There, there is some funds available, uh, but I'll let him, he knows exactly what account that's out of. And before you answer that question, the other question, I thought years ago we did something like that in the city hall before. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm not. But go, go ahead and let me answer the question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the lighting conversion for city hall and the police department has been in the CIP probably two or three times over the last four years. It comes in then we get a price, oh, maybe we can get a grant. And then we start, we look, there's no grant, so it never gets done. So it, it's been off, on again, off again for probably three or four years. You are correct uh, in that it's been explored a couple times. Uh, so far as the funding for this, um, one of the projects that was in the CIP um, under the heading of City Hall Improvements was the atrium windows in the rotunda. Um, and part of that project actually got paid out of last year's budget because we accelerated the project um, per council direction because they were leaking, had mold in them, things of that nature. Um, so all of the funds that were budgeted under the, the silo of City Hall improvements was not spent. So there's about $18,000 in that account still available. And there's about $100,000 in the public works building improvement silo that's not spent. And if you kind of look at the 
the numbers on it, I don't know the specifics, it's probably, what, about 90-10, the work between this building and probably about 90-10. So worst case, if you take 20,000 and 90-10 it, um, you're right at about the number that's available um, under the city hall improvement line, and then there's plenty of money in the public works line. So you're pretty much right at the available budget in, in the one silo and the other silo has quite a bit of money, so. Yeah, I'm you know I'm in favor of doing it, but I just want to know where the money was coming from. It, but one point about this is by next Thursday's council meeting, I might have the number. Um, I'm hopeful that Thursday afternoon we'll get the number from them. Uh, and like I said, I'm, I'm hopeful with what other towns have experienced that it's going to be much less than that twenty thousand. Uh, but I've got to have it on the agenda to be voted on. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to sign it by the end of December, and we'll lose. We won't be guaranteed any funding then. So, um, you know, with that in mind, I should. I hope to have a number next Thursday as to what it's going to cost. One more question. But you stated, if I'm mistaken, you stated some of the funding is already that we've been approved for. Am I right? Yes, if we choose to accept it. Okay. So do we have it in writing from someone that some of this money is already earmarked? That, yes. That I, is guaranteed. Yes. Us? The, the $28,180, I've got the paperwork for that right here. Okay. Uh, we've just got to commit to the project, and then uh, I believe we have six months to complete the project. And uh, we've been notified through the company that did this, this 360 Energy Group, that the uh, the deco grant has been approved for us too, um, so I've I've been told, and I I have no reason to doubt we're going to have about seventy thousand dollars worth of funding that's already guaranteed with us. We're not going to go through with this if we don't this. get that funding. The deco grant is that already in writing, or is was that just a verbal to you? That was a verbal to me that we've been approved, and I certainly wouldn't go through with this unless I know that funding's there. So. We're not going to tell someone to come in until we know that's all solidified. Well, we but had a verbal, and then at one time up here on the, on the grant, and all of a sudden we went forward, and we lost a grant. I just, this one's coming I, through. I, I, I'm, I'm I just want to make sure we got them all in writing. Okay. I, all right. We, you guys did the motion, but there was no dollar amount in there. Not to succeed to $21,804. I mean, if you want, we, to, I'll, you, we'll put that in. I'll make the you, motion that we add that it doesn't go over what twenty. How about making it twenty five? Make it twenty five thousand dollars. Twenty five thousand dollars. That's fine. Just in case something comes up. Oh. Mm -hmm. The secondary. Who se second it? Okay. Okay. With the second best. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Items to be considered on a future meetings. Uh, one is penalties of liquor licenses on g gambling violations, January 2013. Anybody got anything else they want to add? All right, and then I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Every, everybody say, okay, let's vote. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, <coughs> public work? You're on. I'll call a public Public Works Committee order make the mix take of the same people are present. I need a motion to approve the minutes uh, November 29, 2012. That is my motion. Is there a second? Second. Correction changes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, item number four is driveway, driveway replacement for street improvement projects. Who's taking the lead on that one? Go ahead. 
Good evening. Um, we're bringing this before the committee tonight just to get some guidance on our current driveway replacement policy. <coughs> Currently, what we do on streets to be rehabilitated, which is the overlay grind and overlay type street repair, is that we do spot curb repair where we feel the curb has been damaged and no longer conveys water. And where that spot curb repair coincides with the driveway apron, we typically remove two feet of the existing apron in order to install a form and to replace the curb. So it's, a, uh, it's not the full apron, it's not the distance from the curb to the sidewalk. The, the current policy is to only remove two feet in order to basically construct a new curb and put it back in place. This summer, uh, during our construction project uh, with the street program, we received uh, numerous complaints from residents who wanted to see the entire apron replaced. Um, that I'd say, go so far as to say that the policy wasn't very popular with a, a lot of the residents that were along the routes of the project. Um, we, we do these type of projects for a number of communities in the area. It is typical that the type of work that we're performing here in the city is only, uh, it, it coincides with a two to four foot apron replacement. It's not typical that the entire apron's replaced for spot curb repair on rehabilitation projects. So I think the city is doing what most towns do in the area. But like I said, we did receive a number of complaints from the residents along the project this year about not replacing the entire apron. And so what we wanted to do is just bring the issue up to the committee and let you know that one, we did receive this feedback from the residents and just sort of get the, uh, the thoughts of the committee on how we would proceed for future road rehabilitation projects. Um, would you like to remain with the two foot replacement um, or would we uh, change our policy and go to more of a complete apron, apron replacement for the rehabilitation projects. The issue is primarily financial. Uh, if you replace the full aprons on all the driveways on a street that you're doing an overlay project on, it's gonna allow us to do less streets with the same amount of money. Um, yeah, for example, we did a, an estimate on this year's program, and if we would have done the entire apron replacement of all the driveways on the program, it would have added about $400,000 to this year's project. So it's a substantial amount of money uh, with a constrained budget that may mean less streets per year for the city. And so it's, it's a big issue. Um, just wanted to, to let you know this is, you know, the feedback we received and maybe get a little guidance from the committee on how you'd like us to proceed for future road programs. Oh. Alman Roy Wesley. You can ask all the questions you want for oh, your committee. Ahead. You don't have to. Go ahead. <laughs> I have a problem with, with this say I replaced my driveway two years ago and now the city comes along and does the streets. I did the apron, it's the city portions anyways. You cut away and now I spent six, seven thousand dollars on my driveway and I got a cut in the middle and two different shapes of concrete and black top or whatever you want to do. Um, I mean, do you think that that's fair to the residents? I don't think so. That, that is a that that does happen on some of these jobs and and the residents really get upset about that especially when they've done recent work on their own replacement and paid for the replacement you're correct and did we do more streets this year than we do normally i believe so yes it's a larger road program that i'm aware of that so I'm much aware. i mean it is the apron does belong to the city we're the ones that's doing the damage most of the time from the salt and stuff hitting the driveways and the aprons because of pitting of the concrete um, is something that we should look into of doing it all because it is our property. We're just making it, letting them use it. Thanks. Yeah, the first uh, alternative is replace no amount of driveway apron unless dictated by construction activity. What does that mean? Well. Uh, if we're doing an overlay type project, this is opposed to a complete reconstruction. Of it. So if we're doing an overlay project, we normally would not replace any aprons unless we were repairing the curb right in front of the apron. So those jobs, the overlay projects are typically accompanied by what we call spot repair. We look for pieces of damaged curb and repair those. So if someone had a driveway apron and the curb in front of it didn't need to be replaced, we would not normally do any work on their apron. <laughs> Bless you. Um, so 
that, that's the typical deal. But if we have curb replacement in front of someone's driveway apron, that's when we get into this, uh, we get involved with a partial replacement. And, and right now the policy is two foot behind the back of curb in order to install the form to replace it. But I, what we're saying is that policy is not always popular with the residents, especially for like a, uh, Alderman Wesley mentioned, if, if they had recently replaced it on their own, they, they certainly don't like us cutting two feet into a, a newly done apron. So that does become a problem sometimes. Go ahead. Um, sure. Can I follow up? Yes. Um, yeah, that's a, I agree with Alderman uh, Wesley. If, they ha if there's nothing wrong with the apron and you're just replacing the curb, why bother with the apron at all? But who makes the decision? I mean, if it's pitted and the people would like a new apron, but there's nothing basically wrong or dangerous about the apron, 